Hello, hello. Before we begin, um, let's listen to this patch for a second. Can you hear anything unusual? So obviously, <laughs> this, um, this was a trick question, uh, because there is absolutely nothing out of ordinary here. It is the most ordinary subtractive patch you can imagine. VCO going through a filter animated by the LFO and a little bit of reverb. So let's have a look. We do have a VCO, we have LFO, we have a reverb over here, but where is the filter? And the answer is, the filter is right here. So yeah, it's pretty amazing that uh, in VCV Rack we can do that. We can build our own filters using only mixers and inverters. And hey, remember, these are fu fully functional filters. We have frequency control, we have resonance control, and hey, this is a pretty basic design, uh, 24 dB per octave, uh, you know, classic ladder filter. So there's no point building this if we have so many amazing filters in VCV Rack. The point of this is, now imagine that you can put any module in VCV Rack inside your filter, which is pretty crazy. Uh, imagine all the possibilities and, and, you know, trial and error experimentation. You can build really bizarre filters. Alright, so let's start from white noise and we're going to talk about the main building block of our filter, which is a mixer. So I'm going in parallel and this is how it sounds, obviously it's the same. And here is the most amazing move, the most important part of this whole uh, hack. We're going to create a feedback loop here. So we're going to from output of the mixer into channel two. And then watch what happens to our spectrum when I activate that feedback. And I'm compensating. So um, as you can see, we have now a simple low pass filter, probably around 1K. And um, this is what we would call a one-pole filter, 6 dB per octave. Uh, now the question why, why it even works and, and what's going on. By the way, this, when I first uh, tried this, uh, this trick, I, I got goosebumps. And I have to say, um, I still feel it just looks creepy. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so let's let's have a look what's going on. So first of all, um, what is a one pole filter? It's very simple. This is a ba basic building block of uh, most of filter design. So when you have a signal, uh, when you create a feedback loop and put a one sample delay on that feedback path, normally we would use Z, but I just want to do it for like clarity delay. Um, then you basically have a filter. And what you need is the, the two so-called uh, coefficients, but these are just fancy names for volume faders. So basically you have a mixer here with two volume faders and a delay, and that's it. So notice that we have those elements here. We have two glorified volume faders uh, called coefficients. We definitely have, so th these are over here. We definitely have a feedback path, right? This, this is over here. 
Now, what about this delay? Where is that delay? And the answer is, it's actually everywhere. You're, you're looking at it. It's over here, it's over here, it's over here. Um, you see, the way VCV handles signal is it always introduces one sample delay on every cable. So you can imagine that every cable has that kind of mini uh, module called one sample delay. And that delay is also over here. So now you can see that what we have over here on top is equivalent to, um, to our mixer. So this is our one pole filter. Um, now, um, the question is, how can we make it steeper? And it's fairly trivial from this point on, because all you need to do is have another mixer with exactly the same settings and exactly the same patching. So you see, now it's steeper. You can even compare both. Uh, and this is our original signal, right? Uh, so this would be 12 dB per uh, octave um, filter, so it's more like MS-20 type of filter if you want to build one. Um, but why stop here? Uh, let's have a full, full four-pole filter. So it's three, four, and voila. We have our steep filter 24 dB per octave. Um, now, there's one element missing here because um, I'm guessing we want to build a resonant filter and there's no resonant over here. So how we do it, and uh, that's also extremely simple. You put, you take the signal from your output, let's take different color. Um, you take the signal from your output um, and invert it and feed it back to the input. So now notice that we are getting our resonance here. And notice also the behavior. It's exactly what, what happens with uh, Moog filters, that when you increase resonance, other frequencies get attenuated, right? This, this low end. Um, so we can put it here. Yeah. And this is our filter. Um, so now, once we build our filter, we still need to build our user interface. Um, you see, the way these two co coefficients work is that when, when one goes up, another has to go down. They are moving in opposite directions. It's uh, what I would call uh, Michelle Obama rule, which is, you know, when, when they go low, we go high. Uh, so remember that. that these, it's, and you don't even have to do any math. It's just they're, they're just moving the opposite direction. Um, so what we need to do is create a situation where we have two voltages. Uh, one is going up. So let's, um, let's uh, have a look. Let's have um, one that moves um, from 0 to 10 volt. And another at the same time should move from 10 to 0. Uh, and it's up to you how you do it. I will show you the, the version with, with the mixer uh, because I want to for fun stay with uh, vanilla. So we are now inverting that, that signal over here. Right, so we have the situation. And now to this red signal, we need to add 10 volts. So I'm using 10 volt over here. I'm adding it and look what happens, right? So. So we have from zero to 10. So now we have our voltage and uh, all we need to do is plug them into those CV inputs. It's like moving those faders in the opposite direction, except we can do it with CV. So let's take one of them and connect it to the first input of every filter. And then let's take the second one, it's that simple. And once you're done, we have to reset those faders because remember now we are we are using those CV inputs, so these should be Unity. So double click, double click, double click everywhere, and let's reduce that resonance a little bit. And now we have full control.
Let's re replace it with saw wave. Now, what you notice, uh, what you should notice right now is um, when we go really low, the resonance get get uh, really out of control. And by the way, if I go lower, I will probably uh, blow this filter uh, out and uh, I will have to restart VCV rag. So if it happens, just uh, restart. Um, so what happens is that in higher frequencies, we need more of this third fader and in lower it has to go down. So again, this is very simple. Um, all you need to do is plug this third one over here and now this resonance will go down as we go um, towards lower frequencies. And here is uh, our complete filter. Alright, so a few examples here. I have a high pass filter um, and the way you do it is you take the original signal and then you subtract low pass from it. Uh, so in, in here I just did it by um, adding them together except one of these signals is inverted. And in addition I had to do uh, this six um, sample delay. Remember every cable introduces one sample delay so I use mutes uh, to do that. So that's a high pass uh, filter. Here's another interesting example, uh, the cascade filter made out of two biquad filters. It's another topology um, and it's very flexible. It has five coefficients, but it allows you to do uh, many different shapes. And in this case, we have a uh, high shelf. Um, over here, I have um, just a ladder filter with few improvements. So first of all, we have we have a nice uh, user interface using felt uh, knobs and frequency and resonance. Uh, I also use scale instead of uh, that kind of you know mixer hack. Uh, much easier to uh, create those CV signals over here. And I also use BZ Mapper to create um, a special curve for resonance. So as I go up, the resonance is low, and then it goes all the way up and then when I'm and then it goes down right so this way I can open this filter completely in the end and then somewhere in the middle resonance is high and then goes down and I could tweak it uh, precisely and another little improvement here um, this is what I like doing you see I love um, very steep filters like 20 4 dB but then the sound is also muffled. Um, normally it would sound like this. It's very dark. Uh, but here I took signal from different stages, so it's technically a feed-forward uh, filter uh, from different poles and mix them in. So basically you can add that bit of buzz. It's very nice and also you can mix and match to your liking. Uh, so that's my variant here. Here's a uh, distorting filter. Uh, so in the middle I put uh, a couple of wave folders and saturating mixer. Uh, both on feedback path and, and between poles. Uh, I did it by, the, by ear. And also I shaped my resonance curve here. So yeah, this is how you can create those growling filters. This, here's another uh, uh, distortion um, filter, except except it's uh, eight pole, so uh, 48 dB per uh, octave, uh, plus shapers. By the way, putting shaper on the feedback path uh, helps you deal with uh, filter blowout. Um, so this is something you can always do. 
and then you know a bunch of basically wave shaper I mean, clip clippers and and the saturation and i already don't know what happens in this patch but i like this sound so i kept it and let's see yeah <laughs> filter um, and over here <laughs> here I have a really bizarre idea which is putting um, a chorus right into your filter so think about it because of host FX uh, we can <laughs> put every VST plugin inside your filter design on a feedback path or whatever you want <laughs> So without resonance, this filter is well-behaved, but notice what happens when I increase this resonance. 